Now the patient is returning to place the final fixed bridge. Now the final fixed bridge is not a random thing and I'm going to give you some very, very important point with regard to the seating of the uh, final bridge and the fabrication of the final fixed bridge. So anesthesia, then removal, then I pumice the preps with pumice and water on a profi cup after a gross removal of the excess cement, then put two by twos in the mouth and I'm scrubbing those preps with isopropyl alcohol on a cotton ball held by tweezers, a large cotton ball and just scrubbing it because there are going to be some areas that the pumice in the profi cup can't get to. So I'm going to scrub those teeth with this isopropyl alcohol, alcohol on a cotton ball. Be sure to put two by twos in the mouth. A little tiny bit of isopropyl alcohol is not going to hurt anybody, but it's just good form to put the two by twos in the mouth. Then I'm going to rinse that off. Now this is a key point. There's a video in DentistryMasterClasses.com on how to do this. If you never want to adjust an interproximal contact again, the way you do it is you remove the gingival one-fourth of the preparation from the stone model along with the gingival tissue and put the restoration on the sol off of a solid model. So you've got a dime model and a solid model. I'm not going to go into the whole thing here. Then you're going to paint this gingival pontic receptor side area with a pencil. You're going to take a pencil and just color it. And then you're going to remove, very lightly remove, the pencil color five times. Not deep, but very lightly with an amalgam carver. And what that's going to do is create a, a depth right here to receive that pontic so that when you place the bridge on the teeth in the area, the gingival tissue is going to blanch. The patient will love you because they're not going to pack food in that area. So when you place your bridge, you want the gingival tissue to blanch. Willie Geller, the great technician in Zurich, Switzerland that I worked with for many years taught me this technique. It's fantastic and I'm going to show you something else about bridge fabrication that will make your patients love you. Most dentists don't fabricate bridges correctly. See, so this is going to be perfect. The gingival pontic receptor site and the interproximal contact is going to be perfect. You should never have to adjust those. I want that to be an ovate pontic. I like porcelain to zirconium for these bridges. And we prime that with Z prime. I'm going to try the bridge in place. This is out of the box, cleaned into the mouth. You can see there's no interproximal contact adjustment. Now this is very important. See how we're, the tissue is blanching? And sometimes the crowns won't seat, the retainers won't seat completely. You've got to hold it to place just a little while and let that tissue compress. Just hold it to place and the tissue will compress. So see the blanching on the facial. Now here's the blanching on the palo. Now something else that's critical with a fixed bridge. You don't want embrasure spaces. See this is not seating completely just yet. That tissue is compressing. But you don't want embrasure spaces on the palatal. Why? It's not in an aesthetic zone. You can't see them. If you have big embrasure spaces, it's going to pack food. So make these areas flat. You want that to contact the tissue on the palatal. Now on the facial, you're going to have some embrasure spaces, but the palatal, even in the anterior, you want the embrasure spaces on the lingual or the palatal to be flat so the patient doesn't pack food. I'll show you some more photographs once we seat the bridge. All right, so the zirconium's already been treated with Z-Prime and we're going to clean it with isopropyl alcohol once we've tried it in. Just clean it real well. Then this is Vaseline. Dry it, then place Vaseline in the interproximal area and on the gingival aspect of the pontic. And in these little embrasure spaces, on the gingival side so you it'll be easier to remove the excess cement. See I'm just placing Vaseline all along the underside of the pontic and in the embrasure
spaces to make this. So we've got Vaseline here, 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 and here to make it easier to remove the excess cement. Now I'm going to scrub the teeth with Tublicid Red. This is just a cleaner and a desensitizer. And then I'm going to blot it dry, not dry it with air, but I'm going to blot it dry with a 2x2 two two before I cement the bridge. This is just a 3M Unisim composite cement, a resin cement. Now you only, you only squirt the cement around the edges of the crown. Don't fill it up or it won't seat completely. Now used to, back in the day, a lot of dentists would make a hole in the crown, a vent for the cement to come through for the crown to cement seat completely. We don't do that anymore, but you don't want to fill this up or I promise you the crown will not seat because the, the cement can't escape from the margins of the crown as fast as you're seating it. So just put it around the edges, it'll fill up the rest of the crown and the crown will seat. You're gonna push it very hard to play. Now push it kind of slowly to give that cement a chance to escape, but then push forcefully and tell the patient I'm about to press very hard on this bridge so you'll feel some pressure. So push it forcefully and then before the cement sets up, floss, but do not remove the excess cement. You only floss the interproximal contact so the excess cement does not set up in the contact, but that's hard to remove. Do not remove the excess cement around the margins until the cement has initial set. Not rock hard, but initial set, because you want it to peel off, not wipe off. The only cement you remove before it has initial set is in the interproximal contact and just pop floss through there, but don't clean the margin yet. See this is initial set, see it's peeling off. So we're starting to get the cement off the tooth. Check the occlusion. That's the final occlusion. Then I'm going to buff it with this Shofu gray rubber wheel and drip water while you do that. Now the idea of the occlusion is I, I want to be able to move shim stock between the second molars and the distal of the first molars. And I, I don't want the contact on the mesial of the first molar or the bicuspid to be any firmer than that of the cuspid teeth, cuspids and bicuspids. But I want to take the second molar and the distal of the first molar slightly, a shim stock thickness, which is one half of one one thousandth of an inch out of occlusion. You can refer to the Dentistry Masterclasses video on occlusion if you want to know why we're doing that. And then here's a link to how to make a night guard. This is in the Dentistry Masterclasses uh, library. And then you, then you want to teach the patient how to floss under the bridge with super floss. Now you'll note you have to find an area for the monofilament line part of the super floss to go under the bridge in the interproximal area, then pull it through. Then the super floss area will feel snug as you move it under the pontic because you had blanching when you placed it. See, so this is going to feel snug when they move it underneath here. So there's the final bridge and you can see how this is flat on the palatal side so they don't pack food in here. Your patients will love you, especially if they've had a bridge in that area previously that did not, that was not flat and it's just a food hoarder. So make that flat on the palatal side. Now on the facial side, you still want it to be flat, but you want a little embrasure space so it looks natural. So here we have pre-extraction, and this tooth was sectioned, and then socket preservation. That was uh, provisionalized for three months, impressed, and this is the final restoration, and you can see how that's healed beautifully. And that's the dental minute. Sign up for DentistryMasterclasses.com if you really want to experience the best of the best knowledge that Dr. Cutworth has to offer and take your practice to the highest level. Here's what you get by signing up for DentistryMasterclasses.com.